Well, I think it's uh, because somehow this end up becoming one of my issues uh, as a lot of form commissioner um, uh, that I served for five years. We were uh, in charge of um, producing that report on domestic violence restraining orders. And I got appalled by the fact that uh, there are so many victims of the system because they were accused, falsely accused by uh, spouses who basically wanted to get rid of them. And these people can go to the police now and say, look, my husband did something, could be even verbal, could be financial abuse, banking, you name it. Like they have extended this, all sorts of things. Do you know what's the implication of this? A person loses everything. He's prevented from returning home. He's actually, he will get to know that he is now losing everything by the police. When the police is waiting for his return, when he comes back home, the, the guy will be there saying, you cannot enter in your own property. You cannot see your kids anymore because the person accused you of this or that. It, it doesn't really matter. It could be all sorts of things, as I say. The person loses everything. And I have uh, uh, collected many letters, and I suspect thousands of people have lost everything they had in their lives. Uh, property, access to the kids, even bank accounts being assaulted because a person can be planning this kind of action for years in advance. So when the guy receives uh, an order, he has zero in his bank account, perhaps his credit card has been exploded. Um, he's now facing accusations that can be quite outrageous and he has no money, no emotional condition to defend himself. He might even be homeless. All this supported by the system. All this supported by these terrible laws that are in place that were created um, at uh, perhaps uh, support of the feminist lobby. Wow, that's that, that's pretty amazing to hear it that is. there are you know, things like that uh, that could happen. I mean, it certainly yeah. doesn't get uh, mainstream media coverage. I doubt the ABC would make a documentary about that. <laughs> no, unless it happens with someone over there. I think it's easy to be just ignoring this issue, but you know, and uh, but I know as to be a to be a matter of fact that many people have basically lost everything, and they are innocent. They, they, then the, the courts prove their innocence, but it's too late. And no consequences for those who made these accusations. And do you definitely think, uh, because obviously there is, uh, as it's shown, this sort of hysteria about, you know, domestic violence in Australia, we hear the the statistics, you know, one woman dies every week because of uh, yeah. pa partner abuse. So uh, with, uh, well, especially my state government in Victoria, they had the Royal Commission into Family Violence and uh, gave a whole bunch of money out uh, during the, the previous state budget. So is it an area of law which is getting worse in your view? Well, look, I don't, I'm not so sure whether there is a so-called epidemic of domestic violence. There is domestic violence going on, but we need to know the truth of the matter. I think you cannot do what is being done, that is the undermining of natural justice and due process of law. As a law reform commissioner, we released a report saying we need to know what's really happening. Because the person who makes the accusation might actually be the, the real abuser, because I think to make such an accusation that is actually unsubstantiated or false is, in my opinion, should be a for, or considered a form of domestic violence. And so I told the Attorney General that we need to know the truth. That's why you need the rules of evidence. But you know what they did in Western Australia? They have repealed the rules of evidence. There's no need for evidence to be provided, even when it comes to the final hearing. And the, the Attorney General, the, the previous Attorney General, completely ignored the recommendations of my commission. So we have a lot of commission writing to the, to the guy that he should never repeal the Magna Carta. They should never ignore natural justice or due process of law. And it has all these things have been completely ignored. So we do need, these people do not need to prove, even when it comes to the final hearing. So a person just says something and that's taken for granted. And then the other person loses everything. Yeah, that, that's certainly a conversation that, that we're not having when it comes to, 
you know, uh, t talking about this issue. So, yeah, when you put it in, you know, standard legal terms like that, we should really uh, step back and say, well, what are we doing to, you know, our well-established legal principles? Yes. You know, of course, like, you know, and children will be affected as well because they uh, then prevented from seeing one of the parents. There is a link between this alienation and the payment of child support, by the way, because the child support scheme, uh, when when the, the uh, non-custodial parent has to pay the custodial parent, that's proportional to the time of visitation. So these false accusations are very good because then if you make an accusation of this nature, the other person needing to provide, prove his innocence, he's paying 100% of child support. And then the magistrates attempt to keep the custody with the false accuser, even when the accusation is proven to be false, because they claim that the kid or the child got used to live with the other parent. Of course, because the other one was not was basically prevented from from seeing the, other, the his his or her own kid. So it's actually a reward and an incentive, financially speaking, to these. Uh, false accusations. A whole industry is taking place. About 80% of the restraining orders are proven to be entirely false at, when it comes to the to the final hearing, including people like who is being evicted from the properties because the wife has accused the, uh, the wife was having an affair, was having a lover. The husband went just to have a talk to her and said, we shouldn't arrive drunk at 2 a.m. You should actually, you know, have a bit more of concern for your kids and me, myself. I think it's not a good idea for you to be uh, every day arriving 2 a.m. and completely drunk. Then she went to the Justice of the Peace, and the, the Justice of the Peace gave her a restraining order because the husband was asking too much about her affair. And this guy was evicted from his property, and now she is there with her lover. Well, that's that, that's mind blowing. The the fact that you know that uh, that goes on and not exposed. I'm glad that you know you're you're passionate about bringing this to the public's attention because it certainly uh, de uh, deserves it. Yeah, well, certainly, like we, as you can see, it's not free speech. The only problem that we are facing. There are many human rights issues. I mean, and certainly we have real human rights here not the fabricated ones. Because it seems that this government's concerned about fake human rights that are uh, privileges uh, that can be given to special categories of people uh, because, for instance, they can be uh, seen to be uh, having faced uh, previous or past instances of discrimination. But I think that is becoming an old-fashioned idea to say that everybody should have the same rights Regardless of gender, regardless of uh, religion, we should all have same rights and be equal before the law. And I know this is actually like almost uh, uh, a novelty for many people. And I find it amazing that you have a liberal government that seems to care very little for the protection of, of individual rights. By the way, it seems that what they do is normally to attack individual rights. As I have said, they had this guideline extending the concept of domestic violence even to banking abuse. I'll tell you what it means. It means that if you do not share your bank account with your wife, you can be accused of domestic violence because she's going to say that she's being financially oppressed by you. And it's crazy. Because I can have reasons as to why I might not share a bank account. If my wife has a problem with alcohol or drugs or, or she's prodigal, I'm trying to help her by not sharing the bank account. It's obvious. Uh, so there might be reasons as to why we might not decide to do such a thing, but that can be considered a form of banking abuse, which is a form of now of domestic violence. Violence. And that was a guideline saying that if you criticize a person looks, if you threaten divorce, that could also be domestic violence and then you can get a person, another person get a restraining order against you.